Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee are remakes of Pokemon Yellow on the Nintendo Switch with Pikachu and Eevee as your special partners. They're made to be accessible to newer players and kids by being simple and incorporating Pokemon Go mechanics. They're also meant to be a smaller scale title to get a Pokemon game on the Switch as the new major Pokemon titles are still a year away. But the game has some interesting controversy surrounding it. Gen 1 is a very sensitive topic in the community and this game has gotten both overly negative and overly positive reception. The raw extremes people will go to to both defend or tear down this game is absurd. Which is why this review will be taking a fair look at the game, acknowledging both its strengths and weaknesses. Wait a minute, isn't that what a review should do anyway? Let's go Pikachu time! Let's go as a remake keeps it simple. If you've played any Gen 1 game or watched through the first season of the anime, you basically know what's gonna happen. You travel through the Kanto region, collecting badges, battling trainers, catching Pokemon, and beating up a bunch of adults. It's a very simple but fun adventure. And Let's Go adds a lot of tiny details to the region to spice things up. For example, every town has its own architecture and color coding to that town's name, and even have different lampposts. Some events have been expanded with the visual upgrade, like the Ghost and Lavender Town, and even making it into a stealth section. Pokemon have also even gotten new menu sprites too that are more detailed and really bring them to life. Although it is slightly awkward how some of them don't. Like what y'all got against my boy Vaporeon, huh? Let's Go really excels at the tiny details that players both new and old will appreciate throughout the course of their journeys. That being said, even as a smaller scale remake, the game lacks any real significant change to the region which can leave Kanto a little bare. An added route, cave, or town would have been very much appreciated to both expand the game and breathe some more life into the Kanto region. Maybe a home for Moltres, cause let's be honest that bird is homeless, or even the return of the Sevi Islands from Fire Red and Leaf Green would have helped an old region evolve. The latter especially because Let's Go doesn't have much of a post-game, not to say it doesn't have things to do, but it's very limited. Even a simple battle tower to test your team's skills would have been very much appreciated to extend the game's length and expand the region. But that doesn't mean the base adventure itself isn't enjoyable to play through. Kanto is still a very atmospheric region. It may not have the geographical variety of more modern Pokemon games, but it has this urban natural mix that makes it feel like a place you could actually journey through. And let's go, for what it is, looks great. I'm expecting some more visual oomph from the next major games, but for these titles, it works perfectly. Every area has been brought to life with Let's Go's simple and colorful visuals that anyone can really enjoy. But the world itself isn't the only thing that looks great. The Pokemon models reused from the 3DS games have gotten a visual upgrade before they had a tendency to look washed out and unsaturated, but here they look vibrant and clean and really stand out. I'll be honest here, the original games might have looked like this, but anyone who played them saw this, and the fact that Let's Go can actually recapture that feeling is amazing. And since we're talking about the presentation, the music here is also excellently remixed from the originals and captures that feeling of an adventure. It's just a joy to listen to, and while I do prefer the Soul Silver remixes, these are great too. Back on track though, let's go add some things to smooth out your journey, one of the biggest being the removal of HM moves like Cut and Surf and turning them into passive abilities your partner learns. And even if they aren't in your party, they're still usable, meaning you can build your teams without having to worry about learning a certain move. And hey, it's just plain old cute surfing on a surfboard with your partner Pikachu. You also don't even have to have a set team in the first place, because for the first time ever, you can switch Pokemon from anywhere. I don't even have anything extra to say on that, that's just plain old convenient. You can also change your Pokemon's nickname from anywhere, which is also convenient. Like, why did we have to go to someone to change it in the first place anyway? I don't really get that. Anyway, another big change is the removal of random encounters. Pokemon are out on a field, and not only does that add to the game's world by having Pokemon be out in the world and just be part of it, it also means you don't have to carry around 20 repels at once just to not run into random encounters. It also helps you find a Pokemon you want to catch, which is also just plain old convenient. You want to catch a Rhyhorn? Well, there's a Rhyhorn, go catch it. Wild Pokemon aren't the only ones out in the world, though you can walk with and ride with your own Pokemon, and if you don't understand why that's so great, you are not human. It's such a great and unique feeling to walk and adventure with your Pokemon, especially seeing them grow as you go through your journey. The only criticisms I can think of for here are some of the writing choices, like I'm glad it's here in the first place, but you're telling me that I can ride on Haunter, a ghost, but I can't surf the seas on my Blastoise or hop on the back of my Venusaur. But Charizard's rideable. Hmm, I'm feeling some bias. Jokes aside, having Pokemon out with you on the world is always a welcome feature. And it's nice that you get to choose which one instead of having it just be the first one in your party. Can I also just take a moment to say how weird it is to be playing a new Pokemon game on a single screen? I mean, this series has been on two screens for years now, which is just... a weird statement. 
We really are coming full circle here, and the single screen does help recapturing the original game's spirit. Another quick note that I didn't really know where else to add is that your special Eevee or Pikachu in this game are also buffed compared to their original versions. They can learn special moves and really hold their own throughout the game, which is nice because in the original Pokemon Yellow, your Pikachu became useless about halfway through the game. Speaking of useless, that's what I named my rival. Is that an accurate name? Well, actually no. I expected nothing from this game's rival because Pokemon has done rivals pretty bad for the past few gens, but Trace, or Useless, actually ended up being surprisingly okay. As opposed to Blue who had too big of an ego, Trace is designated as being too kind and that being an actual weakness, something I didn't expect from this game. And he actually acts like a supportive friend, not just in dialogue but in the story as well. Unlike Blue who decides to challenge you during a terrorist takeover, Useless decides to hold off Archer while you fight Giovanni. And in what may be the best part of this remake overall, Trace decides to adopt the orphan Cubone from the Marowak in Lavender Tower. That is so precious, oh my god. I was expecting the worst from Trace, and I was treated to something... okay. Not great, but... okay. But unlike Blue who quickly built up his team and actually became a threatening rival, which is, you know, what a rival should be, a challenge, Useless falls into the current rival trend of only having half a team for the game and then magically growing the other half in Victory Road. A rival is a character that should develop alongside you, not just magically get to your level at the end of the game. That being said, because you were surprisingly okay, one day I will name you Useful on another playthrough. Until that day, Useless. Until that day. That was a little awkward. Let's finally move into the gameplay. Just like the journey, Pokemon Let's Go is as traditional as it gets. You catch your favorite Pokemon, form a semi-functioning team, and battle in a turn-based rock-paper-scissor typing system. The biggest appeal of Pokemon has always been the team-building aspect. In other RPGs, you're delegated to forming parties out of classes like Warrior or Mage. But in Pokemon, you instead form teams of your favorite creatures, and because there's no HMs like Cut, you can build it however you want. Pokemon Let's Go is also very easy on the whole, so there's not too much to pressure you when it comes to building your team. I'm one of the people who wants more challenge in this series, but these titles were purposely made to be simple and easy, so criticizing them for being simple and easy would be... a little awkward? I don't know, it just doesn't seem like it would make sense to do that. That said, just because something's easy doesn't mean it can't be interesting. And is Let's Go interesting? Yes and no. On the basic level, it's still Pokemon, so it's still fun. But the problems come in with the selectivity of mechanics. Certain mechanics like the Fairy type and Physical Special Split have been added to Let's Go from the more modern games. But it lacks two simple but very big mechanics that have defined the series' gameplay for years. Abilities and Held Items, which are very self-explanatory. Abilities are passive traits a Pokémon has, like not being able to be poisoned, and Held Items are items a Pokémon holds for a certain effect, like restoring health with a berry. These concepts are not complex, yet at the same time add more strategy to Pokemon's gameplay in the classic Nintendo easy-to-learn, hard-to-master style. I don't think the lack of these ruined the game as I still had fun here, but because it gets so repetitive, I found myself avoiding a lot of trainer battles because they just weren't as interesting. It's passable as a way to introduce players to Pokemon's gameplay, but it also feels like the game is ignoring progress for the sake of keeping it closer to the originals. A remake's job is to not only recapture the original feeling, but then enhance it and make it into a better game. And while it certainly does that in some places, there's still a lot of missed opportunity here. Which brings us to the next omission in Let's Go's lack of an extended Kanto Dex. As the first region, Kanto has gotten many, many evolutions that aren't here. Which is a shame because these evolutions are great like Scizor, Umbreon, and Electivire that would have turned the Pokedex into something more fun and diverse with more options for the player. It also leaves Golbat and Seedra out to dry because without their evolutions, they're very weak compared to the other fully evolved Pokémon. And I like the base Kanto decks, I also don't think as a smaller scale game it needed other dexes, but leaving out these extended evolutions that would only enhance the game once again feels like it's limiting itself for the sake of the originals. Apparently this was done to make the Pokédex easier to complete, but given that these are all extended evolutions, it wouldn't have made it that much harder to complete, and I don't think it was worth losing more interesting Pokémon in the decks. Now thankfully, the Alolan variants are here from Sun and Moon and are easily tradable or transferable from Pokemon Go, and they definitely add some much needed variety to the decks and I'm glad they're here and so easy to get. I love my spinny boy. There's also a new Pokemon in Meltan that you can get through Pokemon Go and I don't hate it and it's a neat concept, but evolving it takes a long time and I'd rather just have my extended decks to be honest. 
Okay, I got my two biggest complaints out of the way. Let's focus on some more general changes now. Pokemon Go replaces EVs of candy. In the previous game, EVs allowed you to customize your Pokemon stats with limited points you got from winning battles. Beat up a bunch of Geodude? Well, here are some defense IVs, you monster. In Let's Go, stats are increased by using candy you get from catching Pokemon and sending them to Professor Oak. And I know this is from Go, but I like the idea of sending Pokemon somewhere safe rather than just throwing them into the wild. I don't know, it's just a nice touch. Candy can be used to increase stats up to 200 per stat, but the threshold increases over time, so it's not abusable unless you yourself go out of your way to abuse it. From what I'm seeing though, most online battles are ignoring this, so you can jump right into them without worrying about candy at all. And yeah, even with reduced mechanics, come on, it's Shen one of some extras, I'm totally curious to see where the meta goes. If it goes anywhere at all. But yeah, point is, I don't really mind this. It's a change that probably won't affect the future games, and hey, if you need an extra boost, well, here's an extra boost. Let's move on to the next edition though, and this one's also divisive, but one I actually don't mind. From Pokemon Go comes catching Pokemon directly with no battles. That's right, no wild battles aside from a few exceptions, and it's an interesting experiment. While I prefer battles, directly catching Pokemon does keep the journey's pace up. To supplement this, you'll never really run out of Pokeballs because every time you beat a trainer, they'll give you more, which is a nice touch. The controls are very hit or miss though. In handheld mode, it's all about timing a press, but with the Joy-Cons, it's kind of hit or miss. But the aspect of having to throw Pokeballs yourself with the Joy-Cons is super immersive. And even though the Joy-Con controls are a little wonky, you definitely will improve as you go through the game, and that improvement feels great. And as you catch Pokemon, you can chain the same Pokemon over and over to get a better version of it, more items, and boosted experience. It also raises the chance of finding a rare or possibly shiny Pokemon, and even if you leave a route or flee, that chain won't break, making it a lot easier to do. This leads to an awkward problem though. Catching Pokemon is a lot faster for getting experience than battling. Sure, I can battle some trainers, or I could chain up a bunch of Pokemon, grab a good version of it, some candy, maybe a shiny, and get more experience with half the effort. This doesn't mean I don't battle or enjoy that battling, but combined with the lesser mechanics I mentioned earlier, I found it less interesting and rewarding than just catching Pokemon. Now to the game's credit, even with more mechanics, this would probably still be more convenient than battling, but I still think it's important to mention nonetheless. Alright, let's talk about the final thing I want to talk about today, and that's Let's Go's edition of 2 player. You can hand your second Joy-Con to a friend, family member, or even yourself and send out a second Pokemon in battle or raise your chance to catch a Pokemon, and you know what? This is a series focused around friendship and working together, so this is perfectly fine. It's also not forced on you, leaving the option there for players in need or just want to share the experience with someone else. Originally, I was going to say that being able to only use one Joy-Con in TV mode because of this was bad, but as I played more, it became so easy to multitask while playing the game since you only need one hand to play it. Like, I'm over here eating pizza, watching YouTube, and recording the game with zero problem, which resulted in a lot of fun moments. And you know, that's what Let's Go is all about. Having simple fun. I've been a little hard on the game, I'll admit, because like I said, I want to be fair and critical. But even despite my personal issues, the Let's Go games are basic and cute for people who want a nice, simple, smooth experience. Now, it does stay a little too committed to the original games, but it is still a nice, simple adventure. So look at what it has to offer and ask yourself, do you think it's worth it or not? Wait, that's my job? I give it a useless out of 10.